Way too much credit, way too much credit. I am uh, visiting with, uh, by the way, uh, to, have, to have the spouses here uh, that are part of your legacy. Uh, someone like uh, Dr. Beth Unger, who Sam was the K-State Acacia brand. To have her here tonight is it's very, very special for me. Beth and I served together on, on uh, John Weefall's cabinet. The reason why we have uh, PC Magazine, about uh, two years ago, named K-State the number, uh, number two out of a, a list of about 40 schools, number two uh, technology school in America, paid attention to undergraduate students. It was all because of Dr. Unger and her good work in making things happen. Sam talked about Acacia, he lived Acacia. This facility was extremely important to him. The men in this chapter, legacy of Acacia, lived through Dr. Unger and then Sam, and I appreciate you being here. And the other spouses that are here, uh, Irma, you You've allowed Bill to give tremendously to this chapter. It's not. This is not the only uh, community project that, that the, the Rileys take and bring to their heart. Uh, but I know it's an important one for, for Bill. He's demonstrated it. He demonstrated it when, when he and Gary and, and Denny came in and, 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 and had a plan. The plan was, frankly, something I'd never seen before. You know, when you become dean at a major university in student life and have what's recognized as the, the best Greek system in America, and the chapter's not doing well, you always have an alum that's going to come in and, and, and say, hey, you know, we, you know, we can do better, we got a plan. I never see the paper. Bill, Gary, and Denny, and others, about, about a dozen, if I remember right, shared with me a plan, a vision I had never seen before. 60 alumni that were going to not just give money, but they're going to roll up their sleeves and build this chapter back, the legacy, build it back like never before, to bring it back like never before. Five, seven members to 57. A chapter off the face of not only our Greek system, but off Acacia's face. You recognize this summer as one of the top chapters in America. To have a man that you recruited lived here, this chapter present, to be the number one acacia in the country, to have your alumni association recognized as the top alumni association in America, give me a break. It doesn't happen without a vision, a great deal of passion and care. And it comes from a few men sometimes that are willing to persevere. And Bill Rowley is one of those individuals. And I know he'll say, it was, you know, Gary, of course, and Denny, and others, Mr. Nelson, we're glad you're here today. And that's important that we, we, have, we have your support as we look toward the future, not only the past, but the future. But I tell you, the greatest tribute I heard from a, a gentleman, I heard about a gentleman, is when Irma, uh, uh, Heather, your middle, middle daughter, the three children, all K-Staters, uh, said to me, said to me, and she was a senior at K-State and had done about everything, national merit, uh, presidential scholar, chair of the student senate, uh, very active in her sorority, ambassador to the university, a student ambassador to the university, says to me in a quiet moment, if I were to make a board of directors for my life, made a board of directors for my life, I had to pick everyone, my dad, my dad would be the chairman of my board. Now think about that. In terms of parents being heroes, and, and for, for this young lady, 21, 22 years old, just talking about her life and the importance of her parents, to say, if I make a board of directors, my dad would be chair of the board, my board. Now, she didn't say, you know, also, you know, Dr. Bosco, you'd be on the board. She didn't say that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the kind of gentleman this, this gentleman is, and, and the kind of legacy you have in, our, in, 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 in your chapter. So it was easy for me to say, let's try it. Because down deep in the side, as a Greek man, as a member of a national fraternity, board of directors, chapter advisor for 15 years, uh, I wish we could have done what this, what, what this gentleman and, and, his, and his leadership and passion put together with others, with, with, with Gary and with Danny and, and, and others that rolled their sleeves and wanted to contribute from zero to 60. We're enjoying the second chapter of the greatest turnaround in football history. I contend that tonight you're celebrating the successes of the men and women in this room the greatest turnaround in fraternity history at our university. You think about that. You think about
about what you've accomplished, what you've accomplished. I go one step further. I am. This is all about you. I'm going to step back for just a moment. I am. Because you, you get I'm wrapped up in saying nice things about me, but frankly, I'm just a guy trying to make, make our, our, our university community a better place in terms of a safe and having be successful in and outside the classroom. I play poker. And uh, my, uh, I play Texas Hold'em. And uh, this last summer, we are in Vegas. And uh, when I go to Vegas, I play cards every night. I don't shave for a week. My wife gives me this privilege of, of, of playing cards at night. And we do things during the day. But at 10 o'clock at night, I play poker. And I don't shave all, all week. Been there for a week celebrating our anniversary, 39 years. She's a K-Stater, by the way. Susan has four degrees at K-State, including her, her PhD. She's a doctor at the university. And she still supervises student teachers. So sometimes we get phone calls, and I'll answer the phone. They'll ask for Dr. Bosco, and I'll say, well, you're talking to Dr. Bosco. This is him, <laughs> real man right here. You know, I'm not just a picture. I'm really right here. And they'll, they'll pause, and they'll say, the other Dr. Bosco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing cards. This is the last night of my vacation. And I've got a straggly beard. I have my K-State hat on. And I work my, my classes. And, and I'm about, uh, the table is full. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm playing for about four hours. The same group of 10 people. And there's a guy on their side, about where you are right now, by their side, uh, about where Mark is. Okay, right about here. And we're playing, and a lot of money on the table. And, and, and it's kind of give and take. And, and I got my K-State hat on. I've got the growth <coughs> and my glasses on. And this gentleman, about where Mark is sitting, on the other side of the table, says, uh, uh, are you K-Stater? I said, yes, I'm a K-Stater. And, and about two minutes later, he says, I, I went to K-State. I said, really? That, that's super. Uh, uh, when was the last time I went back to K-State, about back to my campus? Oh, I've been 30, I spent 30 years living in Manhattan. I lived on the west side, and a, and a, a couple minutes later, I was playing a hand, and, and he was probably thinking most of the money. Uh, he says, uh, he says uh, uh, I live in Manhattan, on the, on, the, on the west side. He said, I live on the west side. Really? So I said, it's case stay here 30 years. So about three or four hands later, he just casually says to me, he says, uh, you got the other people around the table. He says, so, you know, a couple of years ago, I played with Pat Bosco. You ever see him around at all? <laughs> 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 see, you never want to take yourself too seriously. <laughs> I, last weekend, last weekend, I was with a group of men from another fraternity. And uh, we spent the weekend together. Um, spent the weekend together. And these are gentlemen in their, in their 50s, uh, all K-Staters. I was the only one not in their Traveling, traveling back, and uh, we started talking about our case and experiences. And this gentleman, who's a physician, said, I want to tell you all a story. There, there, uh, nine of them belong to another, I will tell you another fraternity, another fraternity, not my fraternity. Uh, uh, and we started talking about their fraternity days. And this gentleman, who's a physician, says, I want to let you guys know something. Last summer, last summer, you rush term, you rush term, rush term. Last summer, my son, by the way, for three generations of this fraternity, our fraternity. My grandfather was a member of the fraternity, our fraternity. My, my dad was a member of our fraternity. I was a member of the fraternity. We got two sons right now, K-Staters, a member of our fraternity. And by the way, the national president of the fraternity is sitting right there. He says, I want to let you know that, that my son came this close to not joining our fraternity. This close. This close. He almost joined another fraternity. We've got to do a better job of recruiting. We've got, a better, got to do a better job of bringing our group together like never before to talk about what we can do in terms of principles, leadership, leadership development, scholarship, because I want to let you know my son, fourth generation, came this close to joining another fraternity. 